everybody. So I rarely do, or I haven't done in a while, kind of a video on legendary aviators. And there are so many. I think the last one I did was with Joe Kittinger, who unfortunately we lost a few months ago. And for me, these type of individuals not only kind of inspire you to strive to be better, to better at what you do, to be a better person. They're kind of role models on top of it, someone you look up to. For this individual that I'm going to cover today, he, I've seen him multiple times in the past, but this recent video that I came across, I don't know if it was just the, everything with him flying, the mechanics of what he was flying, or the clear and concise picture of how old this gentleman was, and he was flying like he was 17 years old and doing it very skillfully. So we're going to cover a aviator who you might recognize from a James Bond movie. And, uh, well, I would say he's about as legendary as they get when it comes to pilots and true gentlemen of the sky. And uh, I just had to do a video on this guy because truly seeing what he's accomplished in life is one basis of why I wanted to cover him and how humble he is, and how driven he is. And I think those are aspects that we should all live by when uh, trying to be not just successful at life, but just getting through life successfully and in one piece. So we're going to cover this guy. His name is Ken Wallace. He's a commander in the Royal Air Force. And in fact, he took his first solo flight in 1937, but what he's best known for is the a stunt double for James Bond, uh, a very special James Bond, Sean Connery, in 1967. Now, what's amazing about this guy is everything that he did and all his accomplishments, and not to mention the countless world records that this guy has uh, acquired in his lifetime. Usually, actually, I would say towards the end of his lifetime. Most people acquire him early on in their lifetime. This guy was doing world records in his 90s. So let's begin when this guy started flying. He uh, flew his first solo flight in 1937 and he flew Wellington bombers for the British Royal, Royal Air Force in World War II. And what makes this amazing is this guy's pretty uh, well seasoned when it comes to piloting. And why I say that is he not only survived World War II and a Wellington bomber. That's a questionable aircraft, in my opinion. Some might argue. But he uh, survived a Bombay explosion mid-flight. He also uh, f survived a barrage balloon collision. And he once returned with nearly 115 holes in his aircraft. He spent 20 years in weapons research for the Royal Air Force. And then he later applied his skills for the movie industry. If you remember the movie, You Only Live Twice. It was a very famous James Bond movie in the late 60s. Uh, <laughs> that gyrocopter scene that you see in there, I'd normally post a video on this, but I'm pretty sure it'll get flagged on YouTube because, well, they have all that stuff copyrighted. But this photo, you recognize it, yeah. He uh, spent 44 hours and nearly 75 flights to capture the seven and a half minute gyrocopter sequence shown in that movie. It's a lot of flying. At the age of 96, he was recognized for his lifetime contribution to aerospace. And one of the quotes that he uh, said was, this award is just a great honor, but at only 96, I'm just a beginner. Words to live by. Wallace set nearly 17 world records in auto gyros. And if you're wondering what this gyro is, it's a gyrocopter. Some of you might know what it is. Other people think it's a helicopter, but much smaller. Yes and no. Believe it or not, gyrocopters were actually invented before helicopters, and they are not mechanically driven as far as the rotor head goes. That is centrifugal and forward flight motion generated. I guess there's a more proper scientific word to say, but there's no driven engine-driven rotor head. It's merely driven by forward airspeed and the uh, pusher engine style in the back. And I'll get into more detail about auto gyros. But he had set 17 world records from uh, 1968 to 2002. And he built 
a multitude of autogyrocopters, and in fact, the one that was in the movie, he built. He uh, was, in 2010, at the age of 94, he had plans to fly, hear this, an autogyro to a world record speed of more than 140 miles an hour. Put those two perspectives in the factor. 94 years old, and he wanted to set the speed record in a gyrocopter. He told the Daily Mail that he had flown up to 136 miles per hour in the same gyrocopter and officially held the record in 2002 at 129 miles per hour. As for his age, Wallace said, I try not to take any notice so long as I'm busy and able and can still turn the propeller to start the engine. Why should I think about numbers? That's a quote that kind of stuck with me when I was reading about this guy. But this video that I'm about to show you really kind of seals in the deal of how legendary this guy was. Essentially flying by the seat of his pants, aka this photo of him literally hanging out the side of his gyrocopter midair taking a photo of the chase plane. But then this actual video and one of the last videos of him uh, flying is truly a remarkable capture. And uh, I had to just do a little video on this guy because he really is a remarkable aviator that you don't hear a lot about now. Unfortunately, he passed. Thank you.